Praise the Lord. Today in the bright and blessed morning, we welcome you all for this morning worship service. Shall we begin our worship service? Sing to the Lord all the world. Worship the Lord and joy come before him with a happy song. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people. We are his foe. Enter the temple gate with thanksgiving. Go into the court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. The Lord is good, with love he is eternal, and his faithfulness lasts forever. Amen. Shall we look to God in prayer? Our merciful and eternal God Almighty, we thank you for the wonderful day that you have given to us with the blessings of yours in our all individual lives as we gather together in your presence. Through this medium, fill us with your Holy Spirit. As your people seated in their own houses, may this time of worship would be really make all our people to come together in one court to worship you and glorify your name and above all receive word and strength. And be with us with throughout the worship service. We ask this prayer in the most precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us all glorify God by singing beautiful hymn. All people that on earth do dwell, all people that on earth do dwell, let us sing together. Responsive reading. Let us read Psalm 82. Psalms 82. It is displayed on the screen. God presides in the heavenly council. In the assembly of God, He gives His decision. You must stop judging unjustly. You must no longer be partial to the wicked. Defend the rights of the poor and the orphans. Be fair to the needy and the helpless. Rescue them from the power of evil men. How ignorant you are. How stupid. You are completely corrupt and justice has disappeared from the world. You are God, I said, of all you are son of the most high. But you will die like men, your life will end like that of any prince. Come, O God, and rule the world, all the nation are yours. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.
Let us say the Apostle Creed and affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And the third day he rose again from the dead, and ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite our MYF to come forward and lead us in the time of present worship.
appreciate our MYF for leading us into praise and worship. May our God continue to bless them and lead them to be a good leaders in days to come in our churches. Let us look to God in prayer. Our merciful and eternal God, we thank you for the wonderful time that you have given to us and for the time in which we can come closer to you and praise you and adore you through this online worship service. We are thankful to you that evil and hardship diseases which are in the surrounding today, you have kept us safe and sound. We glorify your name on earth that by your grace and mercy, we are still alive and continue to enjoy our being in this world. As we all gather to worship you today, may your wisdom, love endure us and bless us all in today's worship. Lord, by being in your presence, we confess our sin which we have committed against you. Our fellow brethren, knowingly and unknowingly, kindly forgive us. Lord, and we pray may your holy blood cleanse us all from the evil. Lord, today we also want to surrender ourselves into your holy hand and keep our petition unto your throne and seek answers for a due course. Now, at this time, Lord, we want to pray for all churches and all non-believers, believers, friends, well-wishers sitting in our service. We seek your blessings upon each family, individual, that they can grow in your light and receive your mercy and be an instrument in the church and in the surroundings to glorify your name. God Almighty, we also pray for our four pillars of the church, especially to the Sunday school children. We commit their lives in your hands and ask your blessings for, for them to lead and guide them in their studies, especially in this situation, in this pandemic, 
where they are pursuing knowledge, pursuing uh, gaining knowledge from the online courses, uh, give your good health as well as knowledge to our children in days. Uh, our loving father, we also want to commit our youth people into your presence and ask blessings and guidance for each one of them and bless them Lord as same, some of our, of our friends, the, those who are pursuing knowledge, pursuing, uh, uh, gaining knowledge from online services, online coaching classes and pursuing college online. Please bless them and guide them and give them a patient to have uh, uh, in their heart to grasp knowledge as well as all the necessities of online courses. Lord, some of our friends, those who are searching for good job, help them and guide them. Due to this pandemic, many of our friends have lost their job and even those who are on job, they, are, they have pay cuts and much more difficulties in their life. We bring all of them into your mighty care. God, we want to com commit our friends who are searching for a life partner. Bless them and show the way right partner at the right time what you have said for them. Even God, many are there in family circle, married couples, those who are seeking blessings from you. Bless them and make them happy, Lord. We all uh, committing our all youngsters and their talents into your mighty care that they can lead church in coming days and in this present scenario. Lord, we also want to pray for women fellowship meetings, gatherings where they come together, pray and meditate on your holy word and enrich them themselves by your holy words and please God we want to pray for them to make them channel of blessings to many and even likewise we want to commit our Methodist Men Fellowship into your care that they also can come together and learn and study on your word of God and can be a blessings or uh, channel to the church as well as to the family as well as in the surroundings. Even we put under your care all the committees that they can work efficiently in the church by your guidance, knowledge and help. Even we pray for our church members, those who are not keeping well and going under the medical treatment, Lord. We ask your healing hand may be upon them and they can be healed and get recovered as soon as possible. God Almighty, we also want to pray for our own missionary, Mr. Pradeep Anandan Gauli, who served in Muddan uh, Taluka, Nandar district. We ask your help and guide protect him, protect him and continue to bless him and his family, his congregation and his outreach mission programs that he can continue to be a blessed channel for many and bring many souls into your kingdom as well as we pray for all the missionaries those who are placed in different uh, areas those who are working with different mission organization bless them and protect them from the persecution and the evil in the surroundings god at this time especially we pray for our methodist circle to all the bishops board of ministry pastors all ds superintendents district superintendents and all who work in your vineyard may flourish and come forward for the help to the needy, oppressed class and marginalized people in this world. God Almighty, we also want to pray for our nation and around the globe, for all the leaders like President, Prime Minister, CM of, of all status, may grant them your wisdom and light of goodness to lead the nation ahead to a development way. We also ask your blessings and healing hand to grant on the people who all are suffered under the pandemic COVID-19 and from the natural calamities like flood in the state of Bihar, Assam and so on. God, we 
also especially pray for the recently incident happened in Lebanon the blast in blast many have lost their life many died and even many have got injured god protect them and give comfort to the grief family and reason incident which happened in calicut when aircraft crashed during landing many got injured god we ask and we pray for their families that your love and comfort give the strength to live life in the world at this time we also remember our senior pastor reverend tennyson who is going to share from the holy word may your wisdom and knowledge lead him to enrich us with the holy manna which is going to be planted in our hearts be fruitful and may this take root in our lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and good deeds even we commit pastor family into your care bless them and guide them lord we also want to commit all the city's soul in your presence and now this prayer in the most powerful and wonderful name of our christ who taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thy is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen today in our mates our own energetic pastor reverend tennyson peter is going to share from the word of god before we hear from the word let us all join together to glorify our majesty by singing a wonderful hymn we have heard the joyful sound jesus save jesus save let us sing together
Praise the Lord. I welcome you all for this morning service. And as we sit for the meditation, shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, as we sit in your presence to read and meditate the word of God, open our eyes to see the truth that are there in the scripture and enable us to learn, enable us to understand, above all to apply in our lives. We thank you and praise you. Hide me in your presence. Let your words come so fresh to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we are still in the dark days of pandemic, churches are not opened, schools and colleges are not opened, factories and industries are not opened, and we are all still in a perplexed mode and thinking when this will change, when this atmosphere will change, how long the Lord is going to allow us to endure these difficult times. So as I was contemplating on these things, there was few things went in my mind and I thought I will share with you. At this adverse situation, in one side we see the corona is widely spread and in the recent days we witnessed heavy rains, flood, the natural catastrophe and um, so many other damages we see around the world. Explosion, fire and people are really going through very tough time. The nations are going through very tough time. And uh, my question is, can God change his mind? Can God change his mind? There is a beautiful verse uh, that is um, found in Numbers chapter 23, 19. God is not a human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So this is commonly understood that God will not change his mind. Once he pronounces any judgment, it will happen. And so I was trying to contemplate on few instances where a God has changed his mind and where God has in a given grace and I found those verses will be very useful for us to read and meditate and uh, claim along with those people to ask God to change his mind at this time. Okay. And before I go to the theme and the points, I want to try to understand along with you what kind of problems are we facing these days in this pandemic? The whole universe is going through the trauma. People are unable to go to their workplace. They start work from home. And as they work from home, they have free time but they do not have time also. And the companies give them more load and they are not able to really, you know, operate. And so the people, those who work from home, they have their own pressure from office, pressure at home, and they have to balance between. And some of them, those who are working from home, due to internet um, connection or failure of connection, failure of power, they go through a very tough time. This is one side and the children are online and they occupy a little space. The mother occupies little space, the husband occupies little space and the electricity is on, the internet is on, the gadgets are on, the communication stops. I do not know what time people eat, what time they, uh, people cook. So a lot of you know, adjustments have taken place and it has also you know, given a lot of pressure to some of the people. Even teachers, when I come across some teachers, they say we have to do a lot of work 
we have to prepare the lesson we have to prepare powerpoints we have to work a lot and uh, apart from working all then we have to set our uh, room suitable for the children to watch me watch my um, teaching and all the screen everything it takes quite a lot of time and so this is another thing and another sector you see there are people those who are ready to work but the offices and companies and factories are not calling them and they are sometimes told not to come don't expect and people are laid off and that is happening in one side and the people those who are working they do not get their payment on time and even if they get the payments sometimes 50% or 30% cut off and that is another problem and the simple people ordinary people those who in uh, those who are into daily wages they run back and forth to get jobs sometimes they don't get job they have to meet their ends it is a big difficulty and to meet the children uh, needs and fees all these things are really um taking a toll upon ordinary families adding to that if they have patients or uh, sick people at home that is another big uh, issue so so many problems we are facing and the uh, people are not able to cope up they go through mental pressure pressures from the family pressures from the office financial strain how to handle how to cope up is a big situation and people are praying lord will you stop will you stop this pandemic the churches are praying individuals are praying all the religious organizations are praying when it is going to end so when i was thinking all these things then i thought okay why not i just meditate along with you on this topic can god change his mind so the first uh, a change of mind is found um in the scripture for one person that is king ezekiah is there reference that would really enable us to understand where god has changed his mind yes i want to draw your attention to uh the life of king hezekiah king hezekiah is one of the uh wonderful kings or uh, the best kings that i can um say because even the bible it is written that he is appreciated by everyone so let's try to understand his life but i want you to turn with me to second chronicles chapter 29 second chronicles chapter 29 i will read few verses that will help us to understand his life ezekiah became king when he was 25 years old and he reigned 29 years in jerusalem his mother's name was abijah the dead daughter of zachariah and he did what was right in the sight of god according to all that his father david had done in the first first year of his reign in the first month he opened the doors of the house of the lord and repaired them then he brought in the priests and the levites and gathered them in the east square and he said to them hear me levites now sanctify yourselves sanctify the house of the lord god of your fathers and carry out the rubbish from the holy place so this was his challenging verse and these are the you know verses that really you know teaches us volume about his uh his leadership i will try to sum up his life ezekiah hails from jerusalem he was the 13th king of juda as we have already read his father was ahaz mother abaja his son manase who succeeded as a man of god ezekiah obeyed the lord in everything he did and listened to his counsel of isaiah his wisdom told him god's way was the best of all the kings of juda ezekiah was the most obedient to god he found such a favor in the lord's eyes that god answered his prayer and added 15 years to his life ezekiah means god has strengthened 
God has strengthened. That itself is very clear that from the time that he took the leadership or king, kingship, he was strengthened by God and he kept himself intact with God and um, his life was well-tuned with the spiritual activities. And we see that um, his father was uh, found to be one of the worst kings in Israel's leading people astray with idolatry. But Hezekiah zealously began to set things right. First he re reopened the temple in Jerusalem. Then he sanctified the temple vessels that had been desecrated. He instituted the Levitical priesthood, restored proper worship and brought back Passover as a national holiday. So, very good about him. And uh, all what is, you know, taught in the scripture about him is found to be so uh, interesting. And not only that, and during his time, the Azirin Empire was very, very strong. And uh, they were trying to come and attack the people of Judah. And um, by the grace of God, he was able to conquer them. He was able to overthrow them. So, so he has made a very good record, but he has done a very great mistake that cannot be forgiven. He, were, he became so proud of everything that he was doing. And uh, one day when the Babylonian convoys came, they came to visit him and he was overjoyed to show all the treasury, the golden and whatever these uh, good things that uh, the temple uh, has acquired, he showed them. And uh, as Isaiah came and he warned him and he even scolded him, why did you do this one? And that was the bad or worst thing ever he has done. But later on he regretted for that. But God did not spare him. He also wanted to punish him. So that was the time God sent Isaiah and um, written in Isaiah chapter 38. I will read a few verses. In those days, Ezekiel was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face towards the wall, and he prayed to the Lord, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will add to your days fifteen years. Here Isaiah came to warn him, thinking that this is the end of his life. Whenever God gets angry, he wants it to be communicated to his servants. And he sent Isaiah and communicated. Instead of setting right his plans for the family and for the kingdom, he said, I will not do it. I still have my faith in God and I will turn towards God only. I will not give up my faith in God. I know how much I walked with the Lord and how much I have done for the Lord. And my Lord will have you know, grace and mercy. So he Pray to God. And he was explaining to God, I walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart. This verse really gave me insight. Today, people of God, we are going through very tough time. And so many of us are aware, are, all of us are aware that death bell may ring at any time for you and me. And the warning is given that we need to set everything in order. When these COVID patients are taken from home, they go with loss of hope. They may not be able to see the family back. 
even the family cannot even see the dead body in such a way the persons are dragged in such a way the persons are picked up from the homes on the other day i was watching one lady was running away from the um, health workers she was hiding herself with the two children and the health workers with the ambulance they came they just you know pulled her and took her and put her in the ambulance the both the small both the kids were crying and that really moved me a lot why they are doing this merciless job who will take care of these children and how these children are going to be taken care will the children be able to see the mother again so this is the case in some of the villages when they come the village people used to fight saying that do you want this young daughter to be left at home and the mother be admitted in the hospital you give treatment over here in some of the house when they come the mentally retarded children are there at home no father only mother used to take care of the child and the village people used to plead don't take this lady if she is gone there this girl or the child also would be uh, affected very badly so allow her to be here only provide whatever the assistance so what we understand is that the death bell may ring for you and me at any time but there is grace there is mercy that is what we understand here here the call has come that you said right but he said that and i will not i will ask the lord because i know my life with the lord today the church should evaluate and understand where we are can we make a prayer like this can we make the lord to change his mind yes here god has changed his mind god has you know shown grace and concern grace and mercy to him uh, the same isaiah who was who prophesied and went or who came and warned and went had to return back had to be sent by god to say you go and tell that i have heard your prayer i have seen your tears surely i will add to your days 15 years dear people of god these days we have also announced in the church that we will have 40 days prayer the prayer is been you know a lot so that we will all together join and ask the lord to change his mind so that the whole universe should be protected and the whole universe should be given another opportunity to live again and the second uh, uh, instant that i want you to understand along with me is found in Jeremiah chapter 26 9 Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord saying this house shall be like Shiloh and the city shall be desolate without an inhabitant and all the people were gathered against Jeremiah in the house of the Lord when the princes of Judah heard these things they came up from the Lord's house king's house to the house of the Lord and sat in the entry of the new gate Jeremiah chapter 26 verse 19 Did Hezekiah king of Judah and all Judah ever put him to death did he not fear the Lord and seek the Lord's favor and the Lord relented concerning the doom which he had pronounced against them but we are doing great evil against themselves here the people of Israel or the priests and the princes when Jeremiah was prophesying against the um destruction of temple they were you know pleading and they were quoting what had happened in the time of ezekiah the word is written like this and the lord relented concerning the doom which he had pronounced we can say the lord has changed his mind pronounced against them and so this also you know gives very clear cut idea that if people could you know come back to the lord if the people could come and repent the lord will certainly hear their cry and they will be changed when these people came and approached the lord you know changed his mind against the destruction of the temple and so today any kind of 
destruction that we are anticipating god says that a few people could believe what i have done to these people of god i will certainly do unto you the third incident that i want you to uh, learn along with me is found in ezekiel chapter 33 verse 14 and 15 ezekiel chapter 33 verse 14 and 15 i'll read from 13 onwards when i say to the righteous that he shall surely live but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity none of his righteous works shall be remembered but because of the iniquity that he has committed he shall die again when i say to the wicked you shall surely die if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right if the wicked restores restores the pledge gives back what he has stolen and walks in the statutes of his of life without committing iniquity he shall surely live he shall not die here the pronouncement is against the wicked people the lord was angry with the people those who are living in immoral life their life style was not pleasing unto god and god was sending the message that the wicked will die and um, he also has got the soft corner if they repent if they turn from their sin and the lord is there to forgive them so god has changed his mind even to save the wicked people so this is an opportunity god has given for people to come and uh, repent and get his favor the next change of mind is found in exodus chapter 32 14 i will read from 11 onwards then moses pleaded with the lord his god and said lord why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of egypt with great power and with a great hand why should the egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people so here he is also saying relent from this harm to your people moses was pleading because this incident is very interesting when moses was uh, meeting with god in the mount sinai people were waiting and waiting it took many days and um, they called aaron aaron i don't we don't think that moses is going to come back again so meantime they gathered all their um, golden earrings and all their you know gold items they gave to aaron and they made um, golden images and they um, built an altar they uh, had burnt offerings peace offerings and they started drinking and they started um, playing what a lot of things when they were grieving their heart in fact they said that these are the gods who have led you from egypt do you think that the lord would be able to bear this statement these are the gods who have brought you from egypt so god let immediately send moses from mount go get down for your people whom you brought out of the land of egypt have corrupted themselves they have turned aside quickly and when he came and saw these people were doing all these nasty things and he was you know pleading to god god with a great pain i have brought these people and if you are going to kill them in this wilderness what is going to happen all will die here i know that you are a consuming fire but lord i plead you i plead you then his prayer goes like this remember abraham isaac and israel your servants to whom you swore by your own self and said to them i will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and all this land that i have spoken of i give to your descendants and they shall inherit forever Lord, you have given promises through your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and everything will be 
gone to dust then after hearing moses prayer verse 14 says so the lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people you know that this really spoke to me volume god you know relented or we can say god changed his mind from the harm which he said that he would do to his people but the last um, reference i want to um, learn along with me is found in amos chapter 7 verse 1 to 6 thus the god showed me behold he formed locust swamps at the beginning of the crop indeed it was the late crop after the king's movings and yes and so it was when they had finished eating the grass of the land i said the prophet is saying o lord god forgive i pray o oh, that jacob may stand for he is small you know god sent locusts even in india we have witness in africa we witness locusts came and they have eaten the crops it was even said in those days and so when they came and eaten amos was really felt uncomfortable and he pleaded lord you forgive i pray jacob may not be able to stand be a, they are very small group and the verse 3 says so the lord relented concerning this it shall not be said the lord when they prayed god changed his mind and then verse 4 thus the lord god showed me behold the lord god called for conflict fire fire and it consumed the great deep and devoured the territory the whole area the farm land was totally you know burning and then again amos had to plead then i said oh lord god cease i pray oh that jacob may stand for he is small so he was pleading lord the clan of jacob is very small if you are destroying the farm and if you are destroying uh, all the cultivations they will die he pleaded and the word says word 6 so the lord relented concerning this this also shall not be said the lord you know this verse is really you know gives me lot of encouragement when we sensibly pray when we pray with a great concern and burden the lord is that changes mind now almost 4 months have gone why the situation has not changed do we have amos do we have ezekiel do we have ezekiel people who can stand in the presence of god and pray and address the destruction address the needs properly and um, god will change the first change of mind is found god changed his mind from taking the life of king ezekiel then god changed his mind from destroying the temple and um, jerusalem then god changed his mind from destroying the wicked people the whole nation was filled with wicked people then in the book of exodus we see when the people of israel they grieved the heart of god by making idols and idol worship when moses prayed for these people god again relented changed his mind and he protected the people the last one we see again in the life of the people of israel the lord wanted to destroy the crops wanted to destroy uh, the land of but he stood in between and he said lord enough is enough the lord stopped everything today people of god these are the you know things that we are seeing everywhere people are losing their life people are losing their hope and who is going to stand in the gap the church has been called by god to pray for these people and if you could you know take time to pray i think we can move mountains once a missionary was um living in a small village and the whole village was really flourishing and the neighborhood village people had seen that these people are 
really you know becoming better day by day they try to understand what is the secret then they said the secret is nothing but we are praying we have a wonderful missionary who has taught us to pray to the living god jesus christ and that's how we are flourishing they said why don't you send this man to our village then they guided to this missionary and uh, this missionary was taken to their village and uh, he went and you know stayed with them he did god's ministry and that village started you know flourishing then again the next village people got it like that this missionary was able to you know move from you know village after village after village and one fine day they could see everywhere the lord jesus christ has done a tremendous work through this missionary because of his prayer prayer can bring victory prayer can make changes and only the lord is going to change the things and the lord is wanting his people to pray in his temple the lord is seeking who will stand in the gap and pray who will stand in the gap and pray i am searching for one person and will you be able to come and stand in the gap and pray so that the lord can change his mind and he can restore the land couple of announcements next week we shall have the online service sharp at 10:30 i would request all the members to come and attend the service the zoom meetings will be held as usual on thursdays for the mif on fridays the bible study saturdays for the sunday school and uh, on sunday for the wcs please attend and be benefited and all those who would like to extend help to the flood affected people in assam bihar and other parts of north and northeast area kindly send your donations to the korar i also want to thank all the members who so faithfully sending your offerings and tight and free will free will offerings uh, continue to do so and um, support the church the lord will continue to bless you all the members those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries are displayed here you can read the names and as we pray we will pray for them during the final prayer on behalf of the congregation and the pastor i greet them and wish them may they have a wonderful birthday celebration and wedding anniversaries in closing we will all sing the hymn that is displayed i know whom i have believed i know whom i have believed at that time you can put your offerings uh, in the boxes that is given to you
let us pray lord our heavenly father we want to thank you and praise you for this day we thank you lord for this wonderful message that communicated god can change his mind we can change god's mind provided we are found holy to talk to him very often we pray but nothing works give us a life that would enable us to stand in your presence and pray like amos like ezekiel like ezekiel like jeremiah like moses these are the good characters we could read in these passages and they are they were saints and they are teaching us lessons that you can also stand in the gap and pray and god can change his mind and bring healing to the nation we thank you as your people live from this place they would go with this thought and they will continue to pray like these people and bring your grace and mercy to the land you also pray for the offering that is placed that would bless it and use it for the extension of your kingdom as we disperse from this place let your grace go with us and give us a wonderful week ahead we pray this prayer the wonderful name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen now may the grace of our lord jesus christ love of god and the sweet communion of the holy spirit may rest and abide with us all both now and for evermore amen Thank you God bless you have a blessed day and a blessed week ahead